Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about fundamentals of testing and moving on to the next segment of today's tutorial that is 1.5 Essential Skills and Good Practices in Testing. As a part of this, we will be trying to understand how exactly testers can communicate well about their findings and maintain some good relationship with that of the other stakeholders. But this is the part one, as this topic is longer, we'll go in bits and pieces. In order to talk about this particular topic, it's very, very important to first understand what is the psychology of testing. When it comes to the testing, of course, a test engineer is not an ordinary person. In fact, the portfolio also does not invite you to be one among those common people which are working otherwise in a project. A tester is someone who is really driven by the perspective of the end user and has nothing to do, I repeat, that has nothing to do what exactly the product might be doing as per the development. A tester must always be negative in nature, negative in perspective, looking forward to find as many defects as possible. Indeed, a tester is someone who is very, very curious about what if, that means in any context, they look forward to see what if, this is different or what if someone tries like this and they come up with different possible areas which might not be working but can i go everything with what comes to my mind again exhaustive testing is impossible so i do not think everything what comes to my mind rather something which is relevant to fulfill the requirement but at the same time we do understand as we bring a lot of negativity to the product and to the other stakeholders we must maintain that positivity towards the people. Quite often it happens that you may not have good relationship with the other stakeholders because you are the carrier of the bad news. Yes, being a tester, you bring that bad news that, hey, your code is just not working and your code is broken and we are just kind of like bringing that news to you. To a certain extent, we do want to highlight here that many people think testing is destructive in nature. Many people think we break the products. Answer is absolutely not. Because we don't break and we are not destructive in nature. The product is already broken. We are just letting them know, right? As a tester, you do not break the product. You do not destroy the product. You have a destroyed piece of code already, which you are testing and letting them know, informing them that, hey, what we got is already broken, right? And that's where people may not appreciate what your communications would be or what your news would be that is defect. Let me also highlight here that as a test engineer, you are someone who has the authority to prove or let people know that you have done a mistake. And that's the reason most of the people may not like you when it comes to even the professional culture, right? Because when you walk into their the workstation, they know that you have something bad for them. <laughs> so being a tester, it takes a really, really important effort and a lot of effort to maintain that positive relationship with other stakeholders, but at the same time, not losing your negativity. That means you should not start loving your product and find nothing in that product, right? So that's where we are talking today about what are those skills and what are those good practices what a tester should follow. The first part we'll be covering today and then we'll look forward to how do we work together with the team and then what exactly it takes to be independent from other stakeholders. So the very first thing we are talking about is the good skills of the tester. And here we are talking about the essentials uh, skills. Number one skill is basically defined as an ability to do something. Well, that comes from one's knowledge, practice and aptitude. A good tester should process, possess some essential skills to that of their job as well. A good tester should be effective team player and should be able to perform testing on different levels of test independence. So we'll be deep diving into the other part of it. But for now, we are just trying to understand what are those essential skills a tester must possess in order to test a system and communicate well. So in order to talk about these important things, let's have a look here. So we have got some generic skills required for testing, which are very easy to understand. Number one, while being generic, the following skills are particularly relevant for tester. That is one, testing should or testing knowledge is very, very important. A tester is not an ordinary person. Many people think that anybody can do testing, but let me tell you, that's not something which is valid statement. Testing do requires you to know technology, 
the way that test cases must be written, the way the execution happens, how to report a defect, and many other things what you'll be learning in the upcoming chapters. The other important thing what we have is the thoroughness, carefulness, curiosity, attention to detail, being methodical, and many more such things. Of course, thoroughness is more of like testing everything particularly, not like missing out anything. Carefulness is more of like going towards the details of everything, like all the information written in the requirement. Curiosity to explore, attention to detail. That means we are not driven by high level information. We do deep dive to understand more about the details of every single aspect and then work on it. On the other hand, good communication skills becomes very important, but not limited to us. Good communication skills is for everyone, but especially when people are negative in nature, it becomes very, very important for you to be as positive as possible because good communication skills also contribute the way you will be reporting the defect to the other stakeholders. You may understand a problem very well, but to communicate the problem to someone else is very crucial. So even a part of like that is active listening, being a team player, because you're not just one person who is doing that. You have to be collaborative with other people at the same time. Analytical thinking, critical thinking, creativity. This is to basically increase the effectiveness of testing, because if you're just limited to the information provided to you, you may not be able to actually find those defects, what you are looking for or what exactly exists. Also to add technical knowledge is equally important today. It's not that era where testers used to be non-technical and then also it used to work fine, behaving like a generic user. Today, technology plays a vital role. And given that a tester does not understand the framework, the architecture or the way the application has been developed, it might be a challenge for them to deep dive into the product. Also to add domain knowledge, because not every single thing is very generic, like you're not talking about every time a website or a simple e-commerce website. Sometimes you are a tester in automotive domain or you're a tester in security, health, com health commerce or, you know, uh, banking, etc. And that's where it becomes very crucial for a tester to be technically strong as well to fulfill all the needs. So a testing essential skills do require you to have very, very uh, technical skills at the same time, the soft skills to make sure that you communicate well and are able to let people know about your progress. Further to add on top of it, of course, we are also looking forward to add some more values that is like testers are often the bearers of the bad news and which we were just talking about for a moment. It is a common human trait to blame the bearer of the bad news that, you know, we just put it back saying that you did it or you purposefully did it and things are actually working fine and so on. So it is very common human trait to blame the bearer of the bad news. Now this makes communication skills very crucial for the tester. Communicating test results may be perceived as criticism of the product and its author. Now here, I want to further deep dive a little bit more and try to talk about what this point is trying to deep dive into from the psychological aspects of human mindset. Now say for example, when we are communicating the findings to that to the owner, like I found a bug, uh, a defect, and just want to let the developer know about it, then of course, the developer is someone who is not supposed to be criticized for this defect, right? Because that person is also working together with you. And at the same time, we should not hurt the ego of an uh, individual. So reporting a defect could be done in a way that like, I'm going to say, for example, the defect is uh, found in the system, right? But the way you report it, the way you communicate it is very important. For example, what if I say the statement, hey developer, you have got 15 mistakes in your code. Or if I say, hey developer, you have done 15 mistakes in a code. <laughs> the two, two statements have two different meanings. The first statement says, hey developer, your code has 15 mistakes, which I can very easily digest as a developer. Considering that, yes, everything is okay. The code has a problem. And this guy is not pointing that finger on me. But in the second statement, I'm upfront telling the developer that you are good for nothing. That means I'm telling him that, hey, developer, you have done 15 mistakes in the code and it makes totally a different sense. So always it is important for a tester to mind the language, mind the words, what they're using, the way they are communicating, because it might hurt somebody else's ego. So it is very important for a tester to keep that finger towards the product and reporting of any such findings should be done in a very fact focused neutral way without criticizing the person who created it, right? So that's where it adds a lot of value. Further to add, confirmation bias can make it difficult to accept information that disagrees with currently held beliefs. 
that is of course the two people may not agree on something as a common understanding because a developer may think that it is absolutely fine as per my understanding or tester may say as per my understanding it is a defect so we need a third person uh, you know advocating on that or maybe moderating with a discussion between the developer and tester to have a good clarity or get a clear picture of what is the ask also at the same time the see some people may perceive testing as a destructive activity even though it contributes greatly to project success and product quality because people do treat this as a destructive destruction in nature or destructive approach the reason is they think building a product is all about writing the code but at some point of time they believe that just because testing happened we are getting delayed <laughs> but trust me on the other side everyone do agrees to a certain extent that thank god we had testing in place because if in case testing was not done this could have gone to production and we could have had a very very pathetic failure in the market additionally to try to improve this view information about defects and failure should be communicated in a constructive way at the same time that means we are not supposed to put it across to someone in a very negative way rather we should look forward to put it as constructive as possible so that they feel they are bringing something good for us not a bad news so put together that's all we had from the part 1 of course uh, we are there with some more topics to talk about under this segment so we'll come back to you with the next segment in part 2 so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below and i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning